Greetings and salutations. It's Off Grid Warrior. And uh, as you can see, we're going to be milling some lumber today, making some lumber out of this pile of logs here. Um, right, so I'm using uh, the Granberg Alaskan MK3 milling attachment right here. And if you look uh, into my past videos, you'll see I have a video uh, with the actual setup of the mill, uh, putting it together. So you can watch that if you're curious. Um, but today we're milling some lumber. And uh, I'm going to start with uh, this guy up here. This is uh, Douglas fir and it's 11 inches uh, in width. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is cut it in half and then I'll be rolling it over and pretty much getting it into position and milling it where you see the chainsaw right there. Um, definitely need to cut a uh, log this size in half. Uh, moving these around by hand uh, can be quite challenging. Trust me, challenging. Okay, so uh, before we move on here, I thought I'd just uh, uh, give you a little tip. One of the things I discovered um, while milling, well, originally the setup you see here is not how I was doing it. I'd roll the logs down and then I'd rest them on these longer logs over here, right? I've cut notches, I even cut notches in these logs just to kind of um, provide a firm seating for the log that I was milling. The problem with having long logs like that underneath what you're milling is if they extend too far out here they may start, and this is what happened with me impeding on, depending on your chainsaw setup impeding on your, your handle or your handle will start knocking whatever log is extended or whatever you're resting your log on um, so as you can see I have a wrap around a handle over here and uh, you can see what will start happening is when you're doing your cuts and you're getting low 
over here. Let's say you're entering in there. As you go, as you start milling, you're going to hit whatever is, uh, uh, whatever you're resting your log on if it extends too far. So keep that in mind because it's a bit of a pain in the butt when you uh, get that far and uh, you can't get past or go any further. You know, that means uh, backing the chainsaw out, rolling the log off and, uh, you know, you know, reconfiguring. So try and avoid that if you can. Uh, so let's get uh, let's get working oh one more thing I found um, that uh, milling the logs with the bark on uh, definitely shortened the life of the chain um, I was sharpening the chain quite often so what I like to do if I can I peel the uh, bark get the bark off the log and uh, for some reason well you know the chain just lasts a little bit longer uh, those times in between sharpening chain uh, are extended so that's always a good thing. Right now I have a, um, a custom made um, a ripping chain on there. Uh, the local uh, still dealer in the area, um, you know, he's, he's uh, been doing this for a long time and he put together a chain for me and uh, it seems to be working pretty well. Uh, I've used the regular still chains um, and they worked actually just fine but uh, this one definitely moves uh, more wood uh, uh, quicker and uh, it enables me to get through the log uh, uh, quicker too. So. Um, Right, let's get uh, debarking. So, uh, what I found through trial and error, the best pool tool that I have available is this Collins axe for uh, for peeling logs. Uh, it's working for me. Uh, I've spent money on on other devices, and uh, you know this has a good amount of weight behind it. Um, so when you start debarking with this, things can move along pretty well. Much faster than a draw knife, that I can assure you. I guess it's very similar to a, a what they would call a spud. It can be a little difficult to get it going. This is pretty much acting as a spud, but uh, you know, um, this is just simply, I found the best way to debark. Um, these logs. Now these logs have been out for, have been cut down probably a year and a half ago. So the bark is uh, coming off fairly easy. But uh, I've done this, used this collin axe on, um, on trees that I've recently felled and um, it works pretty well too. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, yeah, I've put uh, my guide board on, onto the log. Um, this guide board is uh, just under two inches so, uh, in height. It's a, basically a two by 12 by 10 footer. And on the underside, I have uh, these two by fours screwed on, onto the underside on, on, on the edges. And what that uh, basically does is it just helps firm firm up your board and also keep it as true as possible um, the last thing you want in in your guide board is for it to be doing this um, because that means your uh, initial cut uh, on the log is going to be doing that so yeah definitely don't want that and uh, this helps firm that up also um, it also allows the the guide board to actually seat on top of the log, the log a little bit better you can see the log is is somewhat recessed uh, extends into the undersides here and um, where it touches it uh, touches the log um, it actually secures it somewhat allows it to sit on top of the log better um, and then of course I'll I'll tighten tighten up I have three or four screws along here which uh, I'll just put in before I start milling uh, a little tip and I'm sure you guys are gonna probably laugh at me and get a chuckle and say what an idiot but uh, one of the cuts I did, um, I sunk these, uh, firmed everything up, sunk the screws in, and then for some reason I set my bar guide or the depth of my initial cut at three and a half. So you can imagine what happened as I was moving along milling. Um, I hit just the tip of one of these screws, the first screw, and that was just enough to basically s screw up my chain. There's no recovery after that. So um, uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't be an idiot like I was. Don't. Don't try to mill the ends of your screws. That's, that 
is tip number three for the day. Right, so enough talking, let's get milling. Okay guys, so I'm just going to walk you through my process of deciding uh, where I want to set the depth for my first cut and uh, basically I'm going to go off the, the leading edge, the top edge of the guide board here and I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going down and I'm looking at maybe four, four and a quarter, let's put it on this edge here, four and a quarter is somewhere around there, put the tape there. Um, that's going to give me my six inches with the center roughly um, The center of the log roughly in the middle of my six inches So that's what we're going to set it for first depth is going to be set at four and a quarter Roughly there and I'm going to get my six inches out no problem and that's going to leave me two nice boards on the edges um, I'm happy to have one edge of the board rounded because I'll be using those cuts for a chicken coop Which I'll be building here in the future and I'll use that for siding so uh, pretty simple um, again I'm not shooting for absolute perfection here um, this is going to do just fine for me I'm mainly concerned about getting a nice good six inch uh, piece of lumber um, with as wide a sides as possible okay now I promise we shall start milling okay, I know I know you want to see me milling but uh, I thought I'd just let you uh, see how you actually set the depth on this thing just in case you did not see my previous video um, you can see very simple uh, you have these two bars over here and here and this uh, guide the guide bar on the mill actually floats on these two over here and on these two bars you can see numbers and that allows you to set your depth right now we set it four and a half and obviously four and a half in the front over here so very simple process just nuts as you can see loosen them up bring your side up snug them up and then you do the same on this side loosen up um, get into position snug up and then once they snug and they both accurate then that's usually when I tighten them so uh, I've got these little wedges ready towards the end because uh, sometimes when you get out um, uh, you know you'll need some wedges in here just to get the chainsaw fully out or you may need wedges somewhere along you know, if things start to pinch or the weight of the logs an issue, uh, you can use these wedges. So I have these ready. Let's go. Got my uh, ear protection. I'm not ready to go deaf yet.
there you have it. First cut done. So um, obviously now for your second cut you're just going off the surface of of, uh, of the log now. So in theory because we're following the surface we've just cut you know our second cut is gonna should be fairly parallel or parallel um, to this top side here so let's get that next uh, next cut done. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys something. I've reset the depth now to cut, um, do our next cut at six inches. But uh, we run into a little problem at this point. I don't have a guide extending off the log here. So essentially when I put this chainsaw onto the log like this, you can see what happens is I could be tilted this way, I could be slightly tilted that way. You see, I still have too much weight and not all of not both of these posts on the milling attachment are on the log, right? If I had a board extending here, this, this, um, this board on the other side here, sorry, this, uh, this guide on the other side, both of these should be resting on something before you enter into the log. That's what I'm trying to say. So the problem I'm going to have now, because I'm not doing it the preferred method, um, it's a little tricky getting this chainsaw and the weight of the chainsaw balanced um, in there at a correct angle, not doing this. So, but once I'm in there and I get it four or five inches further onto this log, I'll be able to, uh, I'll be good. But um, I believe the recommendations are to still have a guide board on here which will allow you to enter into your next cut, uh, sorry, enter into your next cut uh, parallel to, to the surface. So, uh, just to let you know what I'm doing here is not preferred and not ideal, but uh, you know, I'm working it so uh, That's how we're going to start here So be warned There you go Let's uh, let's do this
There you have it. Some sweet fresh lumber. Let's uh, let's grab the tape measure and see if we are in fact at six inches. Okay. Let's see. Looks pretty good to me. Six inches. Six inches. Six inches. Let's uh, take a peek at the other side. Let's do this the other way now. Six inches. Six inches. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy. Um, you know, for uh, cutting your own lumber, um, that's that's uh, all the accuracy I can possibly ask for. So, uh, there you have it. Uh, Alaskan chainsaw mill. If you're thinking about getting one, maybe this uh, video helped you make that decision. Um, I'll be uh, doing some more videos on some lumber cutting and and uh, some other things I'll be doing with it. So uh, hey, subscribe if you enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, hey, any uh, criticisms, uh, constructive criticism, anything you notice, maybe I could be doing better here. Any suggestions, questions? Hey, feel free. Uh, shoot me, uh, shoot me the question. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.